Hello everyone! This video is about the white blood cell differential count or the WBC diff count for short. These are the references for this video, but most of the information were taken from RODAC's hematology. The white blood cell diff count or the WBC diff count has other names and some of these names are the differential leukocyte count, peripheral differential, white blood cell morphology, WBC differential, and diff count. Any of those names mean the same, but the formal name given to it is the white blood cell count differential. The purpose of performing a WBC diff count is to assess the ability of the body to respond and to eliminate any infection or any foreign substances that might have entered the body. Examples of this are allergens. Also, the WBC diff count may identify different stages of leukemia. So how can a differential count assess the ability of the body to respond and to eliminate infection and foreign substances? In differential counting, we have to count at least 100 white blood cells. And while counting white blood cells, we have to examine the morphology of these cells so that we can identify as to which type of white blood cell they belong to. After the counting and the identifying of these cells, we may now associate these values to certain conditions. And when we do that, we can now assess the body's ability to react or to eliminate to any infection and foreign substances. Before we proceed to the differential count itself, let's first have a review of the different types of white blood cells as we need to identify them properly during differential counting. The first one is the neutrophil. The neutrophil is described to be multi-lobed. These are the ones that kill bacteria, fungi, and foreign debris. The second type of white blood cell is the lymphocyte. The lymphocyte has a deep staining nucleus and is usually eccentric. These help fight viruses and they make antibodies. The next type of white blood cell is the eosinophil, which is bilobed with distinct red granules. These are in charge of killing parasites cancer cells, and they are involved in allergic responses. The next type of white blood cell is a basophil. The basophil is also bilobed, like the eosinophil, but this time has distinct blue, dark blue, or purple granules. They are involved in allergic reactions, like the eosinophil. And the last type of white blood cell is the monocyte, which is described to have a kidney-shaped nucleus. Monocytes clean up damaged cells. White blood cells are counted on a blood smear, and the most common preparation for a blood smear is the wedge smear. When we perform a differential count, we should locate the area that gives an optimal assessment for the different types of WBCs. And this is located in between the heel or the thick part of the smear and the feathery edge. So we are pertaining to the thin area in the middle of the smear. To know if we are at the right area, we have to examine the red blood cells and they should look as follows. The red blood cells are uniformly and singly distributed. That means that you can identify them being as single cells. If they are touching each other, only a few of them will be touching each other. Another characteristic of a good area is that the red blood cells still contain the central pallor and they are obvious that the shape is still intact. For the thick smear, we cannot perform a differential count here because the red blood cells will be piling up on top of each other, forming a rouleau. And these also 
cause distortions on cells, including white blood cells, so classification will be difficult and evaluation will not be accurate. On the other end, the feathery edge of the smear is also not a good area to count white blood cells because this area would have holes in the film and the RBCs look flat and they are large and distorted. As you can see, they do not have the central pallor like in the middle area. After locating the area for assessment, we now employ the battlement pattern for counting white blood cells. So we can start with one area, go all the way down, this is what we call the battlement or the serpentine pattern. White blood cells are counted and classified through the use of a WBC differential counter. This counter has push down buttons that represent the different types of white blood cells. This enables the laboratory scientists to count and to differentiate the white blood cells according to their types in a fast and easy manner. But nowadays, another way of counting differential WBCs is through a computer interface keypad that directly records the count to a computer. In performing the differential count, you should first look for the area where you can have optimal assessment, and that was described earlier. So let's say, for example, that the bottom is your counter, and this is the first oil immersion field that we will examine. So for every cell that you see, for every white blood cell that you see, you have to identify as to which type it belongs to. So let's say the first cell that we have counted is a neutrophil. So you just push down the button for the neutrophil, and a total count will also be automatic at the right side of the counter. And then we continue another neutrophil another neutrophil. So now we see there are three neutrophils counted with a total count of three. As we continue, we have one lymphocyte. So we have three neutrophils and one lymphocyte for a total of four white blood cells. After counting all of the cells in that field, so we have to count all the cells in one oil immersion field. Remember, in the slide we count using the battlement method. So we have to go field by field following this pattern. So let's say we have counted this field. The next thing that we have to do is to move on to the next field. So let's say that we're done with this field. Let's now move on to the next field. So we keep on counting. So the next cell that we see is a lymphocyte. Next is a neutrophil, an eosinophil, and a basophil. So count all the cells inside that field and then continue until you reach 100 cells. So let's move on. Let's say now we have already counted 74 neutrophils, 21 lymphocytes, 2 eosinophils, and 1 basophils, and we have a total of 98 counts. But remember, in a differential count, we should count a total of 100 cells. So let's continue. Another neutrophil, and the last count is a neutrophil. So now we have a total of 100 counts. We do not have to continue anymore as we have already counted 100 white blood cells. The count that we have now at the bottom is what we call as the relative differential count. So we have a neutrophil of 76%, lymphocyte of 21%, eosinophils 2%, basophils of 1%. So in this count, no monocytes were seen in the blood smear. The WBC differential count may help in the assessment of the patient condition when we compare the relative differential to the reference intervals. For example, if there are more than 70 
neutrophils counted in the blood smear, we can say that the patient is having a relative neutrophilia, which is an increase in the number of neutrophils. And this may be caused by a bacterial or a fungal infection, which can help the doctor in his diagnosis. Another example is if there is an increase or more than 42 counts of lymphocytes, the patient may have a relative lymphocytosis, which may be caused by a viral infection. If either the white blood cell count or any of the relative differentials are outside the reference intervals, then we need to analyze the differential count further by performing an absolute differential count. We do this by multiplying the differential by the white blood cell count. Let's take this result as an example. In this test, the white blood cell count is more than the reference interval, so there is leukocytosis. But when we look at the relative differential, neutrophils are within the normal limits. Lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, and basophils are all within the normal limits. So that means we cannot definitely say which type of WBC is causing the increase in white blood cells. Then we compute for the absolute differential. The absolute differential is not requested separately in the laboratory. It is sometimes automatically given by automated machine or the clinician computes for this by themselves. So to compute for the absolute differential, we just multiply the relative differential with the WBC count. So that's 67% or 0 0.67 multiplied to 13.6, and we will have an absolute neutrophil count of 9.1. We do the same with the rest of the relative differential, and we will get their absolute counts. And if we analyze the answers for the absolute differentials, the, for the neutrophils, it is higher than the normal values, while the lymphocytes is normal and the monocytes are also within their limits. We can now say that the increase in the white blood cell count is caused by the neutrophils alone. So there is absolute neutrophilia. Differential counts should always have a total of 100 white blood cells counted. Therefore, it should be a habit by the laboratory scientist to always double check the differentials that they total 100 cells before releasing them from the laboratory. But sometimes there are instances when we have to count more than 100 cells. An example is when the white blood cell count is more than 40 expansion 9 per liter. We then have to count at least 200 cells to make sure that the white blood cell diff count is accurate. Also, there are times when the white blood cell count is more than 100, maybe in cases of leukemia, we then have to count at least 300 to 400 white blood cells counts to say that the differential count is accurate. On the contrary, when there is a decrease in the WBC count, there might not be enough cells to be counted in the smear. In cases like this, 50 cells are counted and they are multiplied by 2 to give a total of 100 cells. But then again, this procedure is not accurate. And that ends our brief lecture discussion about the white blood cell differential count. Thank you very much for watching.